What is going on guys? My name is Hussein and in this video I want to talk about SNI server name indication and I did make a video about SNI but uh, I learned so much after that I want to kind of remake that video but with a with a kind of different eyes and lens. How about we jump into it? So server name indication guys before we explain what it is we got to know why does it exist? There is a there is a problem there is a solution, and SNI, SNI came to solve this problem. And here's the problem, guys. IP addresses. This is, you know, this is one, two, three, four. This is one public I, uh, server, and this is the IP address. And I have a website. And I purchased this public IP address. And you know how expensive those static IP addresses are, because you want your IP address to be static, right? Because you don't want to... Uh, update the DNS every time. I mean, you can, but that's just painful. So you get a static IP address and you host your website there. Okay, and you run port 80. Let's assume no security for now, right? And then you start hosting your beautiful website. And let's say this is called a.com, right? That's the website. Okay? And then you add an entry that says, hey, a.com is actually this IP address, and that's that's the DNS, right? Do on us. <laughs> and there's now the encrypted DNS and all that stuff, but I don't want to go there, man. The mess that DOH caused recently, oh my god. Right. It's another topic for another day. But yeah, so that's the DNS. So this client want to connect to this server. It says, hey, I wanted to go to A.com. I want to get... So make a git request, right? Slash a.com. First of all, says, hey, where's a.com? Bing. Get the IP address and establish the TCP and a three-way handshake and all that jazz. And says, hey, I want to go to a.com. And now the server will say, okay, a.com. There is a property called the host header here in the git request, right? And that includes a.com, right? And with that, the server receives that and says, okay, you actually want to go to a.com. And you might say, Jose, what the heck are you talking about? Of course, they want to go to a.com because we just DNS that thing literally a second ago, right? So why does the user need this extra header in the HTTP uh, protocol? Well, that's a good question. Welcome to that. <laughs> so a.com, there probably there is a folder here somewhere called a.com and there is like ugh, there is an index.html and there is the content javascript and all that jazz right and that's fine and dandy but here's the thing web masters are greedy they want to host multiple webs just one website is just a waste for a whole ip it's a single static ip address right you want to host seven eight websites on the same because what what's with the website it's just a bunch of content like static content and yeah with javascript and all that stuff but but yeah it's just folders it's just content just code right so people invent says okay here's what we're gonna do you can create another folder and call it b.com right and then create a completely different website html and then that should work right because when you make that dns right entry 1.3.4 also points to b.com so you're going to create a new dns entry that points to the same ip address so like, wait a second now when you make a git request you just specify the host header i want to go to actually b.com now when you actually want to make a get request, you do the DNS, you get the public IP address, and then you say, hey, TCP connection, all that jazz, and then, oh, get request, I want to go to b.com. So the server receives this, oh, you want to go to b.com. Oh, b.com, there is the, here's the folder. Take it, b.com content. Awesome. But guys, all of that stuff is what? This is unencrypted. This is all unencrypted. So when the encryption, when HTTPS came into the picture, this whole thing fall apart. <laughs> because here is the thing. 
right? Uh, I didn't still explain what this is, right? All of this stuff fall apart. And let's explain this with HTTPS, right? Let's do the whole thing with HTTPS. Awesome. Let's now do HTTPS, right? So what's the difference, Hussein? It's the same thing. Well, we'll see. Here's the thing. When I, first of all, I want to go to, let's say, a.com, right? That's good. That's, that's fine. I need to do the DNS. I get one, two, three, four, and I establish a TCP connection, right? It's a two-way connection. Uh, send, send, ack, ack. We talked about the TCP handshake. Check it out. But what is after the TCP connection? If I am using HTTPS, TLS handshake, right? What do we do in the TLS handshake? The first thing we do is client hello, right? And we say, yo, sup, I want to establish a communication with you. I want to establish encryption. So I'm going to agree on the key and you're going to agree with the key and you give me your certificate, sir. So, all right. So, so, so And that's the IP address and all that stuff, right? So uh, the Diffie Hellman, I'm going to go to TLS. Check out this video here, right here. If you want to learn more about the TLS handshake. But yeah, if I get this TLS handshake now, the server is supposed to respond with the certificate, right? And what's the certificate? We talked about what certificate. The certificate proves that you own a.com. But guess what? How the heck does the server know which certificate to serve? Because he or she, and why I'm misgendering the server, right? They, right? Actually have two web servers. So they have two certificate. How do I know which one to serve? You don't. <laughs> so you're stuck. Because do, do you serve a.com? But how do you know that the user actually requested a.com? Nothing in the TLS hello actually specify the host name. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It just, there is an IP address. And that's it. There's nothing else. So how do you know what, what certificate to host? Meet SNI, which is just a bunch of extension that adds in the uh, uh, TLS hello, the host name. And that's it. So in the host, in the TLS hello, we add a string called the SNI server name indication. And it's almost available on every single web server. Every single web server has this SNI. So he says, hey, a.com. And now he says, oh, you want to go to a.com? Share. Because the server is from Boston, he say, share. Let's take it to the top and bring it that certificate. All right. And then we're going to serve it a.com certificate, right? And then ugh, the server will serve the a.com certificate. If you want to establish with b.com, just specify b.com and then we're gonna send you back b.com certificate and after that because after that we send the actual after we establish the tls encryption and all that stuff this will be encrypted that was supposed to be a lock by the way that's a beautiful lock and it says okay i wanted to go to a.com and and yeah i want this is the host and i want to go to a.com right and here is where we actually serve the content of a.com right the problem here with the uh, tls is we didn't even reach to the state where w we don't know which certificate which certificate to serve in order to actually reach the content right that's why the connection is always terminated so we needed an sni so we can either uh, provide default certificate that capture both which is very very expensive those wild card certificate but uh, that's be that's much better way obviously there are some problems here so what happened guys uh, questions comments in the comment section below guys what if i do this in 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 google one two three four https just the ip address without host will this work write your comments below and then pause the video so this will fail and i take it back this it depends on the configuration of the server it will fail because first of all say, okay we're gonna do one two three four one two three four let's establish a connection to port four four three by the way we're going to talk about that but you guys know already i'm gonna establish and i'm gonna do tls hello and the sni name will be one two three four and the server will receive it and says 
what the heck is one two three four i don't have a site called one two three four i don't have a site called one two three four i don't have a certificate called one two three four so they will fail if you configured your web server to have a default certificate like let's say one two three four always serves a.com then you're gonna get certificate a.com however this will fail <laughs> because get host will also have one two three four in it instead of the a.com and then when you try to actually serve the content so it's like what the heck is one two three four i don't have a host for one two three four again if the server is configured to serve default content you can serve this so you might get away with it if you want to right but yeah i show all of that stuff if in practical details because some of you yell at me it's like hussein you don't do practical videos anymore i do i just like to relax sometime and, and do virtual boarding sue me don't sue me guys all right i love you all right so yeah uh, I, I like to mix things up a little bit all right obviously guys final point sni is not perfect and and the reason is because when we send this beautiful TLD, this is a mess. I'm going I'm making a mess, guys. All right. If we when we send this TLS uh, handshake, there are colors. Sheesh. Why why am I use, not using colors? This is the TLS, by the way. If I'm sending the TLS handshake, right? I'm sending a.com in plain text because this happened before the encryption, right? So this is in plain text. So Karen here. That's supposed to be a skirt, but sure. Yeah, Karen can sniff, and that's how ISP is sniff, by the way, guys, and know where you're going because of SNI. They still know where you're going, all right? So they can know. They know where you're going, right? Obviously, they also know where you're going because you just requested a DNS, and you, DNS uses UDP, right? And UDP is not encrypted, right? Unless we go with DOH, which is Firefox is enabling for us really recently, which we just destroyed. <laughs> if Firefox enabled DH for a day, DOH for a day, I think, and it just slammed down the DNS provider next DNS, I think, and it just like bleh, it died <laughs> because they they had a, like a bug. They did they basically DDoS the DNS provider to do the encryption. But yeah, anyway, guys, so yeah, uh, there is a new extension called eSNI, the encrypted SNI, which essentially encrypt that stuff, but it will go with the DOH, the DNS over HTTPS. All right, guys, that's it for me today. That was a quick video, just uh, chatting a little bit about the SNI technology over virtual board. And let me know if you enjoy these kind of videos. I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome.